So good news everyone, movies are back. And one of them was smart enough to not be released in theaters. <laughs> uh, actually, two of them were smart enough to not be released in theaters. One of them is that new Megan Fox in the military movie. <laughs> I'm tempted to watch because you know, you know that would be good for views. You know people would be like, oh, I gotta see how bad this is. So we might end up getting to that. But before we get to that, let's get to the one that, man, this and New Mutants being released in the same weekend is so weird because both of these films were those films that for years people were like, yeah, that's never coming. That is never going to get released. Uh, except that with New Mutants, it got made, and then they were like, oh, we can't show this to the public. No, let's go back and let's 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 re-add this. Let's, let's add more scenes. Let's take out scenes. Let's change that around. I don't care if all the actors look different. Let's bring them back in to reshoot their scenes. Oh, now we're in the heads of Disney? Well, now we have to wait a while before we can get me released. And, oh, now there's a pandemic. Okay, we can't release it because of that. So, yeah, uh, that movie was cursed. This is one that was just, like, in development hell forever. Like, I remember people talking about this thing being made a decade ago. And it had the exact same premise. The mm -hmm. exact same premise a decade ago when they were talking about this was Bill and Ted, they're both grown up now, but they did end up becoming the big massive rock stars and their song didn't unite the world. So now they have to figure out why the thing that they were told was going to happen in their other films did end up happening. And it's kind of weird that because it got delayed, it makes the movie better <laughs> because the point of the film is that, hey, that thing that we said was going to happen when you grew up never ended up happening. The longer it goes without being made, the older they become, so the bigger the message ends up hitting. So it's like, oh, well, that actually kind of worked out. These guys. Um, what is, uh, do you have any experience with Bill and Ted? I, I did watch the first one, and I did enjoy it. Um, I've only watched certain parts of the second movie. Yeah, I remember that uh, for a long time when I was a kid, I was familiar with these films because they were on Comedy Central, I think. I also remember watching the animated series. The animated series, series yeah. yeah. <laughs> I actually think that for both of us, that was our first exposure to that. Uh, but I remember that for a while, I had seen these films, but not in order, because I would catch just bits and pieces of it here on TV. Uh, but around the time when I was like 14, 15, I ended up watching both of them. Um, and that was a while back, so I'll admit I don't have the freshest memory of them. But I did like them, uh, although I don't know if this is an unpopular opinion or anything, but I thought the first one was like, yeah, it's, it's a fine, like, 80s comedy. It's a fine, like, teenage 80s film. It's fine. It didn't really mean that much to me. It didn't hit me the way that it did with other people. I really like the second one. The second one where it's not time travel, it's them going to heaven and hell and it's death and, like, making all these, like, obscure jokes about, like, German expressionist filmmaking. It's like... <laughs> This is actually really smart. Uh, I actually really enjoyed that. And with this film, uh, we will not be going into spoilers until the end of the movie, uh, until the end of our review. Um, but I will say, it doesn't really, like the first one was time travel, the second one was heaven and hell. This one, it's time travel and heaven and hell. It's just yeah. both those things. Like it's the first two films put together. And for the first like half of this film, it's time travel. And I was like, eh, this is all right, this is all right. And then it gets to the hell stuff, and I went, oh, I think this is hilarious. I think this is great. And it's kind of weird that because this merged both of the previous films, my opinions about both of the previous films apply to each section of this movie the way that it did to the previous films. Um, yeah, I think that this film, the, the best thing that I can say about this movie is that it justifies its existence. Yeah. <laughs> because there's so many franchises out there that's like, well, we're going to come back after 30 years of not having a movie. It's like, why? <laughs> why do you want to come back after 30 we're years? We're going to reboot this cartoon that was popular in the 80s. Like, what? <laughs> when Andy Simmons was in the 90s. I know. Uh, I don't know which one you were referring to. Uh, that's it's, it was just like a generic, generic over, yeah. Yeah, but that's where my mind instantly went when you said that. I was like, why do we want more Ren and Stimpy? <laughs> Most of the people who love that are gone now. Uh, <laughs> what? Um, but yeah, uh, and most of the people who did love it and are still here know what happened to its creators. It's like, I don't want any part of this mm -hmm. thing. Uh, but we're not getting into that. Um, but yeah, this film, I kept hearing about them saying like, oh, we're going to bring this thing back. And it's going to be about them like, old now and they're all sad and I'm like Wh why why do you want to do that and yeah at the very beginning of this film when you see like Bill and Ted as older guys like just trying to get through life and they're like going to marriage counseling and I was just like who wanted this who was who's 
such a big fan of the old Bill and Ted movies, they were like, you know what I want? To see them sad. That's what I want. I want to see them old and sad now. That's what I want from this new Bill and Ted I'm movie. old and sad, therefore everyone else should be old and sad. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> who, who wants this now? <laughs> but man, when this movie decides to introduce, like, the sci-fi elements, it does not, like, subtly drip that in there or anything. It just slams that in here because they are living their normal lives. And they talk about how after the last film, they did take off and they did become a big success. And then their success died down and then nobody liked them. Yeah, and then they kept trying new things. And yeah, new because things they didn't worse. do the song that would unite the world. They, they, didn't they, do they just it. became popular and that's it. They became popular, but they didn't unite the world. So their careers kind of died out. And now they're doing, you know, weddings, which. It's, I do kind of like the joke they have their game because in the first film, uh, there was this woman who was like four years older than them who married uh, Ted's dad. Then in the sequel, she, mar- she divorced Ted's dad and married Bill's dad. And this thing opens up with them at the wedding of her and Ted's brother. I thought, that's actually a good like place to take that running gag. Okay, that's not bad. And right when this film begins, they're performing at the wedding, and like immediately when it begins, they did something really smart. I thought, you know what? This gives me some faith in this thing. This makes me think that this could actually be a really smart and like faithful adaptation. It's that I never even realized this. I was watching a review of both the previous Bill and Ted films, and someone pointed this out, and it never occurred to me, but the name of the film is Bill and Ted. So in, like, not every shot, but, like, at least 75% of the shots, like, maybe even more of that, Bill is on the left, Ted is on the right. Mm-hmm. That's how they are always positioned. <laughs> and I was like, I never noticed that, but you're absolutely right. That is how they're always positioned. When you see them in the present, the very first thing we see of them is them at the way. Ted is on the left, Bill is on the right. I went, that man, if you did that on purpose to show like how messed up the present day is and that things are not right right now, that's really <laughs> smart. I don't know if you did, but the fact that this is our first look at them in the modern day when things are messed up and Ted is on the left and Bill is on the right, that actually feels really smart if you actually did that on purpose. Uh, so I don't know if they did, but it did give me some faith. Uh, the dog really wants to get in the lap. Yeah, she's being a big old fuss butt. Yeah, fuss butt. Fuss butts win. Get what we want. <laughs> uh, so anyway. Uh, but yeah, this film, it just, it's them just being sad for a little bit. And them just like, we got to get our careers going again, man. And then the time travel element just gets introduced. And it's Kirsten Shaw playing the daughter of Rufus, who was George Carlin in the previous one, the time travel for the previous mm-hmm. one. Oh, big fan of Kirsten Shaw, uh, even though I think I'm mispronouncing your name. Uh, I never know if it's Kirsten or Kristen. I always see it written, so I'm always like, oh, I don't know how I actually pronounce it. My bad. Um, but I'm a big fan of her, and I think she is good here. Mm-hmm. But the one thing I will say is I don't really buy her as George Carlin's daughter. <laughs> uh, I kept looking at that. I was like, there's, I don't know. Like, I just, I don't see it. But that's like all I can really say. Like aside from that, she's just fine in this film. She's totally fine in this film. Um, but she says like, yeah, okay, you guys, it's foretold that you will tell, you will sing this song, you will do the performance at this location at this time. It's coming up, and even though this is time travel, you're still on a deadline, which was kind of weird. Like they never even bothered to explain that. They give him like an omni clock, like the ultimate clock that's like perfect time or something, and it's like, yeah, it's counting down how many more minutes you have until you have to be at that exact spot. So because there's like a time outside time, but they never even go with that explanation. I can't help but pet that dog. Pet <laughs> that dog. Yes, you're. Too too tempting to pet the dog. Uh, okay, so uh, so they have to like finally write this song by that time. So in the previous film, they tra- time traveled into the past. Now they're going to time travel into the future to find their future selves and basically just take the song from them. Yeah. And it becomes this running gag of them just seeing like how bad things have gotten for them in the future. Uh, and it is charming. I do enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, like we didn't even like. Um, I don't. It's not the really. Daughters? Yeah. Yes, I was. I was wondering when we should bring that up. Yeah, I mean, it's not really spoiler. They literally like talk. They are the They're narrators there, the the in the. <laughs> they open up the movie. You're right. Yes. Uh, but yeah, they have uh, daughters. Uh, yeah, Peter getting too fuzzy now. Yeah. Uh, 
they have daughters, and Bill's daughter is named Thea, mm -hmm. or Little Ted, and Ted's daughter is named Billy, or Little Bill. Uh... Uh, although I don't remember, like, Billy's her nickname. I don't remember what her actual name is. But, yeah, they're, it's a new generation of Bill and Ted. And I gotta say, those daughters are great. Yeah, I honestly wish they had, like, more screen time. Me too. I really did. Uh, because when they were doing the introductions and when you first see them there at the wedding and they're not talking, they're just there in the crowd, my immediate thought was they're going to be embarrassed of their dads. And they're going to be like, oh, dad, why are you still talking about this stuff? And that's going to be the whole plot is that their yeah. daughters don't believe them. No, it's the exact opposite. Everyone else doesn't believe in them. Their daughters believe in them. They are literally like, they just are like their dads. They are literally <laughs> just little Bill and Ted. And man, the actresses are great, but I really have to give it up to whoever was little Bill. Uh, Ted Star, the one with the black hair. Man, it's almost like you time traveled back and got teenage Keanu Reeves and like just put like a uh, well, I was gonna say put a wig on, but it's like no, that was literally his haircut back then. Uh, yeah, just like time traveled to an alternate dimension, then went into the past where Keanu Reeves was a girl and grabbed her and brought her into this film. Cause it was like I just kept looking at that going, oh my god, she is exactly, she is nailing this performance right now, Little Ted. Really good, really good, but Little Bill was the one that just blew my mind on that one. Um, yeah, uh, which I didn't stop and think about this until way later in the film, so I don't know if they did this. But when I did think about it, I did start to notice that, yeah, in about like 75% of the scenes, Little Bill is on the left, Little Ted is on the right. Like, it was late in the film when I started paying attention to this, so I don't know how it's done throughout the rest of the film. But when I did actually stop thinking, wait a minute, are they doing the same thing with them that they do with Bill and Ted? They were also doing the same thing with them. Uh, so yeah, this film does a lot of, like, things that let you know they were Bill and Ted fans, the people who made this, which, in all fairness, I think the associate producer on this film is Alex Winters, a.k.a. Bill. Uh, so... And even though that guy has not gotten as much work as Keanu Reeves has, you look back at his career, it's like, man, you're actually a pretty smart guy. Uh, which, in all fairness, Keanu Reeves is a really smart guy. You never know it because he typically plays kind of dumb guys. But well, no, like he's like a <laughs> member of Menza. He is a really smart dude in real life. Um, like, either, like, dumb guys or d guys do not, that don't talk a yes. lot, like like the silent yeah, type. Yeah, man, I remember back when the running gag with Keanu Reeves was, ha ha, this guy can't act, so he can only do one thing. And now the running gag with Keanu Reeves is, man, this guy can only do one thing, but we like that one thing, <laughs> and we will support this one thing that he does until the day that we die. He can only do one thing, but damn, is he good at it. So like, I, <laughs> it's like, yeah, I don't, like, listen, man, if you want to just go around and kill people because they killed your dog... <laughs> I don't care, like, just, yeah, you're, <laughs> you're exactly what we need in that role. Yeah, I had to admit, I was kind of hesitant at first because I thought, like, you know, the actors still playing themselves when, like, back in the 80s, I thought it'd be, like, awkward having, like, adults act like teens, but they pulled it off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it does not take long, like, as I said, when we're in the beginning of this film and it's them just living their normal lives and being sad and going to marriage counseling, I was just like... Uh, I don't know, this is just weird to me, and I'm not really digging this. The moment that, like, again, the sci-fi element almost just arrives, like, well, time for the movie to start now, everybody. <laughs> uh, so it's a little bit awkward where it gets introduced, but when it comes in, as soon as they get blasted into the future and they start going on their adventure into the future, yeah, I, it was like, this is Bill and Ted, all right, they're back. It's like, you don't miss a beat on that. They are totally back in those roles. And I kind of love seeing them interact with their future selves because their future selves are dicks. <laughs> and I kind of love seeing their interactions with them. Um, and there's so many just dumb things that they do. And you're like, man, I'm not going to buy these adults doing the dumb things that teenagers do. But there's like a moment which they have to escape from this house. And they can't escape because they're being hunted down by their future selves. And they're like, yeah, our future selves know everything that we're going to do. So we have to do something that not even we're going to know what we do, man. And... I won't spoil what they did, <laughs> but what they did, I just looked at it and was like, I'm totally buying this. <laughs> I, I, yeah, all right, that's Bill and Ted, all right, I get it. It doesn't matter if they're, you know, 30 years older right now. Totally works. Um, so, yeah, I really did enjoy. Yeah, they're uh, like so. 40 now. Like, it said, like... Uh, well, yeah, like in the, in time the, travel is weird. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, because their last film was in the early 90s, so it should be 30 years ahead of the time Okay, now. well, yeah. I'm, I'm listening to, I think, because I'm thinking. There's like also the time travel involved, as you know. <laughs> yeah, it depends on what you're thinking about the first film and blah, blah, blah. But yeah, uh, my only real problem with this film, 
my only real problem is that is, it was, well, okay, there's two problems. One is that when the film ends, it kind of just ends. It's kind of just, and credits. Oh, okay, well, it's, it's, a, it's a nice ending, but I mean, it cuts off. Uh, okay, actually, I have a third problem. Sorry. Uh, okay, so that was the first problem. Second problem is uh, there's also like a subplot involving their wives. And it feels like they have an entire movie off screen. Yeah, it's like that's like that's the thing. Is like I want to like spend more time, like a little bit more time on their wives and a lot more time on the kids. Yes, yes, absolutely. I want more time with them. But the kids, at least, do we do get to see their adventures. Yes, we do. The wives, we keep having this right thing where their future selves are like, yeah, man, your wives ended up time traveling too, and they went to other dimensions searching for better versions of you, and that's why they ended up leaving you in the future. And you see the wives start this adventure, and then we ne like you never see anything else of that until like the conclusion when they reappear. And I won't say what happens there at the end, but they kind of just come back, and it literally is just so. What happened on your time traveling adventure? Well, this is like <laughs> you're not gonna show any of that, huh? Right. Like, like whenever like Bill and Ted would like go be up to like shenanigans and stuff, like. Their wives will pop up every now and then, but then they like go back into their time machine and like blast off. So. That that still implies that like you're gonna see like a decent chunk of them. Like you see that like twice in this film, and it's like a background joke. Yeah, it is. And, like, jeez, man, come on. Uh, which the way they introduced the idea of the wives time traveling, I was like, oh, okay, that's actually pretty. Good. That's a good introduction to that idea. But man, it really is like there had to have been like 20 minutes of this script that got cut and it was just all them. Uh, and it really kind of stinks. But my other problem is that it doesn't feel like this movie does enough new stuff. It does new stuff, but not really enough because it is basically just Bill and Ted 1 and Bill and Ted 2 smushed together. And I wish there had been a little bit more. And there comes a moment towards the end in which they're being hunted down by basically a Terminator. It's like <laughs> an iPod version of the Terminator. Um, yeah. It breaks just as easily. Yes. <laughs> yes. Is, is the Terminator if it had been made by Apple? Uh, and it is just hunting them down. But then, like, towards the end of this, the thing has no personality or anything. But when we hit the third act, then it gets a personality and starts teaming up with them, and I loved it! I <laughs> loved its personality! I thought it was great, like, it's supposed to be this big intimidating killer robot, but then like when it starts talking, it's got this very awkward, hi, hi, I I'm Craig, hi. No, it was Dennis. Dennis, that was it, <laughs> Dennis! It was like, Dennis makes something or something. It's got like a middle name too, uh, but it's like, hi, I, I, I feel bad about the things that I did. I was like, I love this. Killer Robo, whatever. It reminds me of in Bill and Ted 2, where you get death, and death is all intimidating, but then death is a sore loser, and he also kind of sucks at games. <laughs> and I was like, that's great! And he's also very insecure. I love that take on death. And I looked at this and went, that's kind of exactly what I liked about death in the second film, and you're giving me with a new character, with a new twist on. I would like to see way more of this. And like, all I can think is, why wasn't this a running gag throughout the entire movie? Like, the killer robot? They introduced the idea of the killer robot chasing them down, and then it's a solid half hour before we see that thing again. Mm -hmm. I just thought, there is so much more good stuff here with that. Again, it feels like there was, I said there was about like 20 minutes with the lives taken out. There's probably another 10 minutes in here of like the killer robot, the daughters, all that stuff just taken out of this thing. Uh, and this thing is almost two hours long. So it's not like they were cutting this thing down to get like as short as they possibly could. No, this thing probably was originally like two and a half hours, which for a Bill and Ted movie is kind of a lot. Yeah, I gotta it is. admit, that's but kind like of like you said, it's like literally like one and two smushed together, so yeah, it would make sense if films. it was longer. Yes. Um And yeah, it's it really kind of bums me out that I there's a lot of things in here that I'm sure would absolutely have made the film better, and I do get the feeling probably were in here at one point and they just ended up cutting them. Um but in all honesty, I look at the stuff that they kept in there, and I'm like, yeah, but that's all important to the plot. You can't take that other stuff out of there. It's like, uh, yeah, that's a shame. <laughs> uh, yeah, I really do want to know what, 
what ended up getting taken out of this thing. Yeah, uh, like that's the thing. Like streaming services need to have like special features, like they do on DVDs, like yeah. co like co uh, like commentary, commentary and like deleted scenes. I've like, never the longest time that streaming <laughs> services need commentary tracks. <laughs> like I am stunned Netflix has not jumped on that. Yeah, I am shocked at that. Uh, especially I mean, they would the do like interviews with the actors for like. Something, sometimes, but, yeah. sometimes, but like not always, and it's like we kind of want to see the other stuff. Yeah, like, man. You want to do the behind the scenes stuff. Like. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's it's a real shame that the complaints that I have with this film, I feel like there's a script out there that fixed a lot of these complaints, but uh, you know, we'll never know. Yeah, it's a shame. <laughs> um, but yeah, I do have to keep coming back around. That robot is great. And I really feel like if we had just gotten like 10 more minutes of that robot like sprinkled in throughout the film, like his interactions with like the other characters in here, his interactions with like the people in the future, I think that stuff would have been great. Uh, but sadly we didn't. Um, but yeah, I'm, I did still really enjoy this film, like more than I was expecting to. Because yeah. even though I really like the second Bill and Ted, the first one, I do not have that fan falling for it like everyone else does. I'm just like, yeah, it's a fine film. And I had no interest in seeing them, you know, sad now. I was like, why do I even want to watch this movie? Uh, so, yeah, I went into this with not low expectations, but just like with low interest in it. And I came out pretty happy. Uh, I kind of feel like this is the film that. Uh, 2020 was needing because it's like yeah man this is just this is good times that's yeah. all this film is and it's like older Bill and Ted weren't even like sad they were yeah. just like determined to get they the weren't song <laughs> that is something that you gotta give it to them after you know 20 30 years of just failure they were still in there they were still fighting like you gotta give it to Bill and Ted yeah, on that you one. know they were still happy with their kids and their wives even though their wives didn't weren't happy their with their wives got yeah because <laughs> they're idiots they're like yeah okay <laughs> Uh, but they're idiots that mean well. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, and again, I gotta say, like, the daughters were breakout stars <laughs> in this thing. Um, uh, so I'm gonna give this an 8 out of 10. Yeah, I'd probably give it the same too. Yeah, this is really enjoyable. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, we'll go into uh, spoiler time now. Um, we keep hearing that Bill and Ted are going to make the song that will unite the world. Bill and Ted will make the song that unites the world. I called this immediately. I called this as soon as the second time that we saw the daughters, because the second time that we saw the daughters is when Bill and Ted get home, and they're both listening to music, and they're like, oh man, that one song that you were doing, oh, it was the great, like, you totally took inspiration from this artist, and like, thank you, little Ted, that was my inspiration. And I went, oh, wow, it's kind of cool to see that their daughters actually are fans of their work, but also they're just huge music fans. Yeah. Like, that's their personality. They are characters who absolutely love music. And it hit me immediately that Bill and Ted will create the song that unites the world. Little Bill, Little Ted, it's going to be the daughters who end up doing it. And sure enough, that's what happened. Yeah. yeah it's, it's I mean, off. it's not a big shock. It's but not a big shock, it's but still, it works. It's still nice, you know? It's, it's <laughs> nice, and also, they set this up. They set it up that Bill and Ted, they're going on their quest into the future to try and find all the, like, find what this song was. But the daughters, who are massive music fans, they're going on a quest throughout history yeah. to, to bring this band together. Yeah, to like, back up like the most famous musicians throughout history. Yeah, and everything, and it's really which is, that was a really cool. Th which the guy who they got to play Louis Armstrong, man, good job on that guy. Because um, Louis Armstrong does not have an easy voice to replicate. No. <laughs> uh, and yeah, when you see that they're going back in time to get this band going, went, there go. Yeah, it's <laughs> absolutely. And I mean, they set it up. They set it up very well. And they set up constantly like they are huge music fans and they have an encyclopedic knowledge of music. Uh, and I love that at the end of it is like, you guys have to create the song that will say, where I was like, but we don't know how to play instruments. And I love the kind of message of it is, even if you don't know how to do a thing, you can still have knowledge of that thing that's useful. They did, like, Bill and Ted's daughters were not the greatest musicians. They were the greatest music producers. Yes. Bill and Ted are the greatest musicians. Their daughters were the greatest music producers. Yes, so like they have that ear. They have that ear for, like, what works together. Yeah, so, like, they were that. the ones who were able, like, to conduct all the other musicians. They created the song, they Bill and Ted played it, but yeah, you see how that worked out. It's like, oh man, that's really cool. Yeah. I like that. And it's like, I kind of wish there was like 
maybe like an after scene where like you see Bill and Ted actually like using sound bits on computer to like edit music together. Oh, that'd be nice. Yeah, because I think that would totally be something that they would do. Like I said, one of my problems is that this song, this song, <laughs> this movie just ends. Like they have to unite the entire world in song and they do this thing where they like, because Kid Cudi is a quantum physics genius, which I'm always weirded out when you get popular modern day musicians to be in your movie, because whenever I see that, I'm always like, man, I hope that you remain relevant. Because uh, a lot, man, I can't think of how many times we've seen a musician pop up in some of the ends like, hey, it's this musician, and then that musician is never heard from again. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I... But like, the, like uh, him being like a physicist and everything yeah. kind of like reminded me of uh, Wayne's World where Alex Cooper showed up and he was actually very intelligent. Yes. So. Yeah, I mean, it's a good gag. <laughs> yes. it, I am not saying it's a bad gag. Uh, but yeah, it's a good gag. He pops up and he explains to them how they can use the phone book to base the phone booth to basically be everywhere all at once. So they go throughout all of time all at once, giving everyone musical instruments so they can all play along with the song that they're all playing. Uh, and it's a good song. I gotta <laughs> give them that too. It is a good uplifting song that they pick. Um, so they all play this song together, and then they go, and then that's how we unite the world with music. Oh my Crap. gosh, Peach, you are being so fussy. Yes, buddy. You just want to be up, and then you want to be down. Got to get up to get down. Barf. Okay. Uh, but yeah, then it, they go, and that's how we create the song that united the world. Credits. But then during credits, they have this really nice thing where you just get all this video footage of people just like regular normal people playing musical instruments all around the world. And that's one of the things that made me kind of go, you know what, even though I have a problem with the fact that there isn't another scene in here at the end, that's really like in 2020, man, you need something that just ends with the entire world coming together in music yeah. and not just like a story thing, but you actually see that in like the credits. And, like, see, I like, totally forgot to mention that the reality was falling apart too. Oh, yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> that's not important. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, that seemed pretty important. It was pretty important, yes. Uh, <laughs> but that's how they were able to like get everyone together. Yeah, go on, buddy. Go oh, on, Peach. Buddy. Oh, Peach. Yes, I got the big lap. Sit yes, down. he has the longer legs, therefore yes. the bigger lap. Yes. Um, and flop. There, yeah, there we go. go. Uh, she looks so happy with herself, like, aha, I got up here. <laughs> exactly what I wanted. Blah, 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 blah. All right. Um, but yeah, uh, man, I'm trying to think of who played uh, the, like, grand Ah, bit my tongue. The grand leader from the future, because uh, she was really good in here, too. Oh, God, I have much mouth now. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, really did enjoy that credit sequence, but I agree with you. I wish there had been like another scene afterwards. Uh, which there is a post credit scene. The post credit yeah. scene, man, you want to talk about a way for Bill and Ted to go out. That's a good post credit scene. Mm -hmm. uh, do not make a fourth film now. Yes. I don't care how good this does. You have now made the best possible way for Bill and Ted to go they, out. They, they made the song that united the world. They, they don't need to do anything else. If you <laughs> want to make another Bill and Ted movie, The Daughters. Yes, exactly. That's that's the next Bill and Ted. Uh, again, I gotta give it to those actresses. They nailed that. It was like you look at that and you're not like, yeah, these are two people doing Bill and Ted impersonations. You look at that and go, no, that's the daughter of Bill and Ted. <laughs> um, I was actually checking those credits there, like, were they actually their the actor's daughter? Because <laughs> man, they really they really did a good job there. Um, uh, anything else to talk about in here? Um, I don't know. I was. I really did enjoy that they got the little like George Carlin cameo in here. I thought that was respectfully done. Um, uh, yeah, I think I want to. I want to talk about like each of the individual scenes of them in the future, but I won't. I'll say that for everybody out there. But I will just say I love the progression on each of those. Mm -hmm. um, uh, oh yeah, when they went to hell, I uh, I gotta say. As I said, I was a much bigger fan of Bill and Ted 2 than Bill and Ted 1. And yeah, when they went to hell and just going around talking to all the demons in there, and the demons were like, Hi, very nice to meet you. And then, like, the robot coming up, Hi, I'm Dennis. Oh, hi, Dennis. So I, I love how just like awkwardly polite everyone in hell was. <laughs> I don't know. Like, it was just so charming. Um, yeah, uh, this is a good. This is a good, fun film. Mm -hmm. And I think that is a good, uplifting thing that we all need right now. Yes. Uh, but yeah, thank you. That is our look at Bill and Ted Face the Music. Uh, movies are starting to come out again, but again, we're not going to see any of them unless they come out on streaming because, oh my God, 
why would you go and risk your life right now, even for a movie? Mm -hmm. uh, especially <laughs> for some of the movies that got released. Yeah. Uh, I won't say which one, but you all know which one I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, but yeah, thank you guys very much for tuning in. Peach really wants to have dinner right now, so we are going to end this now, but come back next week in which we'll probably review something else, even if it's just that terrible, awful Megan Fox film. Or no, Mulan comes out next week. Yeah. Yeah, we'll review Mulan. That's what we'll do. Bye, everyone. Bye. Through the camera. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>